Look, let's go across the pond and talk to the sumo, former super lightweight champion of the world, Paulie Mananaji. Paulie, nice to see you. Hey, good to see you guys, man. How's everything? Very good, very good. We're just talking about the dearth of heavyweight champions from your side of the pond and trying to get our fingers on why that might be the case. What's your view on it? Um, I just, I, I hate what you guys are saying. I just feel like uh, Western culture in general has gotten a bit more spoiled and specifically American culture has gotten a bit more spoiled. To fight for a living, it is the, it takes the depths of your mental fortitude, the, the more more so than any other other sport, you know? Um, I, I get that there are opportunities in, in the NFL and in the NBA, but there were always opportunities in the NFL and the NBA before as, as well, you know? Um, I just feel, and, and, and George made a good point too, there's plenty of those guys who do not make the NFL and the NBA as well, and, and, they're, and they're still not winding up in, in, in boxing. I just think that there's a, a softening up of uh, American Western culture, and uh, you know, you're just not seeing it as much as before. Uh, really, this is, this is outside, you know, outside of Latin culture, you still see some African American fighters in the lower weight classes, but outside of African uh, of, of of Latin culture, you don't see a lot of American-born boxers like that. The, the same way you used to, anyway. You know, so I just feel like it's a, it's sometimes it's a bit of a more of a uh, the Westernizing has softened up of the culture a little bit and they're just not ready to you know go into a, a something that takes so much dedication and then still while you're all dedicated you still might be softening through it in order to make it you know the way some of the great heavyweights of the past proved um that, that's i mean that's sort of I, I i get that there's talent physically here uh but you know even jared anderson i felt like they were trying to fit a a, a square peg into a round hole he hadn't looked good in a few fights already you know it wasn't like the bacoli fight was so much of a shock. I mean, he hadn't looked good against Charles Martin. He hadn't looked good against Rodenko, you know. So, so he was he was already sort of being found out before uh, the Bacoli fight. The Bacoli fight just more so confirmed. And now he's young. Can he come back? Sure. Um, but you get knocked out like that, and uh, he, he sort of seemed a bit too happy, a bit um, not so disappointed as he should be in the way he took his first L in the post fight interview. I, I just thought to myself, you know, this guy, he just feels like he's made money. He's like, he's not even disappointed the way he should be, you know. Uh, your first loss is a is a it should be traumatizing. Your first professional loss should always be something traumatizing, regardless of, of who it's against and how much they pay you for it or whatever. But I, I felt like it was like a, another day at the office for him in the post fight interview. So I don't know. I just feel like it's a softening up of Western culture, personally. But culturally, Paulie, I mean, we would you would I would say that what England or what America does, England tends to do as a matter of course. But we've got this period of time now where British heavyweights seemingly are so dominant that no, there doesn't seem to be any immediacy about an American heavyweight coming to the fore again. Is there any anything that I'm missing there? I mean, culturally, I think England's very similar. We've got a raft of heavyweights that are doing very well at this moment in time. But are we going to likely see an American coming to the fore again? And I mean, it, yes, and you always could. Um, and, and you're right about that. You know, that's a great point you're making. But then it goes back to what you guys are saying on the show as well that in that the, the sport of boxing is the third or fourth biggest sport in the UK and it's not as big as in the US so I even though I'm saying there's a softening up of of, of of Western culture let me see if I can put this correctly you'll be willing to suffer if something makes you big enough if something's worthwhile to you and in the UK you know you see boxing stars they're they're, they're still on front page of the newspapers they're still getting major major headlines in America the young lad who's growing up doesn't really see boxing stars on the major uh, major gossip pages or the, or the major pages in general. Um, as a matter of fact, the, the guys that are most famous in the crossover era in, in boxing that are crossing over are probably guys like Jake Paul or even Ryan Garcia who have a major Instagram and YouTube presence, right? So I think that, yes, the cultures are similar, but the sport is still so big in the UK that you sort of push yourself more to, to find glory. And you guys have... You know a great crop of heavyweights right now for me i can remember sort of like in the 80s growing up or early 90s where uh america used to talk this way about the uk heavyweights you know where it was like ah you know they're, they're trying to push frank bruto on on us but you know we have a lot of great heavyweights here and then lennox these you know quote unquote canadian and they made him british just so they could have somebody well now look the tables are turned now now all the all the great heavyweights are british and you guys are laughing at us so you know it, it could also come in in uh little spots, you know, generations change. Paulie, obviously, look, we're, we're talking heavyweights here, but can we can we open it a bit wider as well to just the whole of state of boxing? Because I, I was looking at your fight 
against Migo Okoto, right? And I was looking at the pound-for-pound -pound rankings then and how stacked it was, whether it be at 140, 147, moving up 154, 160. I look at all those four divisions I've just mentioned and, I mean, it's slim pickings at the moment. We've got a lot of good guys coming through at 135, but you look at the state of boxing in those four. I mean, look at the 160 division. I mean, Carlos Adama is Alan Canali, and now you've got Danny Garcia versus Lara. I mean, where are all the boxers? Like, not just the heavyweights, where's everyone? Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. I think they are there. If you go into the gyms, they're there. The problem is you have to keep the wheel turning. And, and I think fighters not fighting each other is, is an issue because now you don't allow – you got it. For example, we had an issue when, uh, uh, in the 140-pound division right now where right? Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson aren't fighting. In the 168-pound division, there was uh, Canelo and Benavides aren't fighting. What ends up happening is guys don't want to fight each other because guys want to fight those guys. And until those guys fight each other, you know, the, the, nobody else is going to take a chance underneath them because, hey, you know what, I want to stay in those sweepstakes. And, you know, I want to I be able to jump in with the winner when they, when they end up fighting. For example, at 168, nobody's fighting anybody. You got great fighters, but nobody's fighting anybody because Canelo's holding up all the titles and nobody wants to take a chance because they're taking the example from the top. So I think that, you know, you end up sort of not letting younger the younger crop come to the forefront and be promoted and, 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 and be seen for as good as they are. I want to show you, man, you go into boxing gyms in America, you've got some talent there. You know, you've got, you got guys that, are, you know, can be pushed into the, into the mix. But if the guys at the top aren't fighting, then the, the, the talent at the bottom is not going to get that, that chance. You saw this in the welterweight division with Jerron Ennis, really. You know, there was an entire crop of welterweights that were really, really good. And, and you know, they weren't letting Jerron Ennis into the mix, you know, because it's sort of like, okay, we're in the room. We're going to play with each other. They actually, if I'm honest, they, they did that to Kel Brook as well because he wasn't with the, with the same stable in the U.S., you know. So if you don't let the wheel turn, you can't develop new, 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 new eyeballs going to new talent and the wheel keeps turning. And that's what I'm sort of seeing right now. That's kind of why the, it's positive that Turkey al is doing this, at least in the heavyweight division, where he's bringing fights and he's making the fights together. I have some things I agree with Turkey al and some things I disagree with, but one of the things I really agree with is the fact that you know he's making all these fights and the wheel's turning. Look at how the, the wheel, look at what happens when you make the fights that are supposed to happen. The wheels of the heavyweight division are turning. American heavyweights aside, forget that. But uh, uh, the wheels turn in the heavyweight division. You know what I mean? You understand what I'm saying? Everybody's fighting everybody. And and what happens? You're developing new guys that come in. But Coley wasn't that known, the guy you just had on the show. But then he gets, he knocks out Jared Anderson. I grant that he was known, but again, his 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 um his the, the his brand wasn't as big as it is now. You know what I'm saying? So the wheels of the heavyweight division are turning because you make the fights. That has to happen in the lower weight class as well. So that's where the boxers are. They exist. There's nobody's fighting each other, so they don't. They're not able to come up to the forefront. Talking about Turkey Elisheik, you just mentioned him about. Obviously, you've got the perceived pound for pound king is Terence Crawford, and there is this perception from what I listened to with the Turkey Elisheik interview that he can't, even he can't make the fight between Crawford and Canelo. Where are you on that? Paulie, do you like that fight? Do you think that uh, Crawford should be, should be stepping up from the weight class he is to two or three weight classes up to fight Canelo anyway? I'm not. I'm not crazy about it. I think no, Canelo is looking for uh, easy pickings. Uh, easy pickings later in his career. Um, the fact that he's been allowed to, to uh, avoid a mandatory for three years is absolutely appalling. You know that the, the the sanctioning body should be ashamed of themselves. Absolutely disgraceful. Um, but I think he would may possibly consider Crawford. But he wants a crazy amount of money because he sees the kind of money Turkey al uh pays. And I think he's just, you know, sort of being taken, trying to take advantage of it, which I, of course, rightfully offended Turkey al -Ashik. I'm not crazy about the fight. I think weight classes exist for a reason. Crawford's been amazing. His, his talent has been something that has overcome the, the weight class deficit. But at a certain point, you can start to see that. And listen, man, the Crawford and Madrimo fight was right there. I don't understand why there's, you know, there's this talk about Crawford and Canelo. I think if anything... That, that fight right there should tell you that he's not able to probably go up that many more weight classes. I mean, he really had to test himself in that fight. That fight came down to the last couple of rounds, if you ask me. My dream off is good. You have a 154-pound division that's very, very good. I can also see why Crawford would just want to take on Canelo because Canelo's like him. He's made a lot of money already. Mm. And then, you know, it's sort of like a Hollywood type of fight where it's big names, big, big brands in the, in the division in, in boxing and you just fight each other. Because you fight these young, hungry guys, you're going to end up having – uh, 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 being really, really tested against guys that the, the world is not going to give you credit for beating, like I'm a dream of. That weight class is difficult. Last question before you go, Paulie. Who do you want to see Canelo with him? Benavides? 
Um, I want to see. I don't care who Canelo fights if he will vacate the titles. You know, I, personally, I've been saying this for two years. I think Benavidez runs him over like a train running over a, a, a car that's stuck in the train tracks. I, wow. That's what I think, and I, I stick with that. And his apprehension to, to fight the mandatory continuously only further cements my opinion of that. I, so I don't think he's gonna fight Benavides. I, I the only reason I want to see him fight Benavides is for the belts, because I wouldn't even I don't even think it would I don't even think it would be a good fight. Uh, if he would vacate the titles, he could go on his retirement tour like like Chavez Senior did at the end of his career. You know, remember if you guys remember that far back. But I don't know, man. I I I I I'm more excited about other things than I am Canelo, man. I mean Crawford Madrimov was it was a uh, really really uh, uh, exciting. Uh, I talk about the things I like about Turkey Alashik. One thing I don't like about Turkey Alashik is he's, he talks like he's making tune-up fights. He keeps talking about what you'll do after this fight and after this fight. These are not tune-up fights. You can't predict the winners. And we saw that when he tried to make AJ and Wilder, he was overlooking Zhang like as if he didn't exist. And then and then Zhang ended up knocking out Wilder, and that, that imploded. He's done that again here with Crawford and, and Virgil Ortiz now. Since he can't make the Canelo fight, he was talking about, I'm going to make him with Virgil Ortiz. Dude, Virgil Ortiz and Bohochuk just fought a neck-and-neck neck fight that half the world thinks Bohochuk won. Don't you think that should be a rematch instead? Why Why are we trying to push that? And he was talking about that even before Virgil fought Bohochuk. So I love the fight Turkey Alasik is making, but he's got to understand, from, at least from in my humble opinion, these are not tune-up fights. You can't talk about them like, okay, well, we're going to do next. He's doing it again with Dubois, as a matter of fact. I mean, I favor AJ in the fight, but Dubois is no pushover. You can't just make like, oh, you're going to make uh, uh, AJ uh, against uh, the winner of Usyk and Fury or whatever you're going to do as if Dubois doesn't exist. You have to have a plan both ways. Listen, if this wins, he's going to go this way. If this guy wins, it's going to go that way. These are very, very exciting fights. No matter who wins, you've got exciting possibilities. And I'm thankful for that. I think he's done an amazing job. But I, this is hard to script. This stuff is hard to script unless you make tune up fights. And one thing Turkey is not doing, he's not making tune up fights. He's making great fights. Jeez, Paulie, I thought I could speak quickly and feel content. Yeah, well, you told me it's the last thought, so I was trying to get all in at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Good lad. Nice to see you. Thanks for dropping by. Cheers, boy. See you. Take care, guys. Thank um, you.